This business is like the Wild West. Gold, silver, rare coins, lost treasures of history. You never know what's gonna walk through that door. These are coins from North Korea. I'll probably double my money. Watch this. I'm Evan Kale, and this is Pawn Man. You guys, we have a great episode of Pawn Man in store, but before we get into it, I sincerely want to thank the episode sponsor, my good friend Ian, Local Coin Company. You guys, check out Local Coin Company, visit them on social media, also Bullion Daddy. Ian is one of the only people I've actually met, like physically met in this industry. He's one of the owners of Local Coin Company. Really awesome guy. I met him last year when I was in Oregon. He took me and my girlfriend out to dinner. He's a fantastic seller, great resource in the community. And local coin company gets some really cool stuff. I buy quite a lot from them. Visit their store location here, or again, check them out online, or check them out on Whatnot, too. They're doing a lot on Whatnot, and they're very, very entertaining. Not as entertaining as me, but still. Pretty entertaining. And with that, you guys, let's get into the episode. All right, I think I talked about this. I don't know, I've been through a lot of shit. My mind's not working so well, so maybe you guys have seen this. This, you guys, is the first antique firearm I have uh, ever purchased. This was mailed to me by a follower. This is an 1863 Colt Navy revolver. Seems to be in really good shape. Now, guns are not my forte. Like I said, this is my first antique gun I bought, but as we covered with firearms in a recent episode, you look to make sure all the serial numbers match, all the parts match. Also, the fact that it comes with this antique box makes it rare. This box is incredible shape. It's original, but the question is with this, you know, like I said, the condition looks good Does it fire because that makes all the difference with these guns. So what I'm gonna do uh, It took a while to find the guy I found an antique firearm appraiser and expert here in Minnesota So we're gonna go take a little field trip um, I'm probably not gonna get him on camera because he's shall we say camera shy He's gonna test fire it analyze it give me an appraisal and then we will go and try and find a buyer after that That there's an antique expert that has discovered that I have this and is trying to buy this from me like right away, no questions asked. Tells me that uh, this is probably a pretty expensive gun. I've seen these ranging low end 2,000, high end six, maybe even more. I have no idea, but I paid 850. So what I did show you guys, what we did do on camera was that Civil War sword. So what I'm gonna try and do, cause they are from the same year. Both those weapons have definitely killed people. I guarantee this has killed someone. I'm gonna try and sell them as a package deal. But the first thing to do is see if this buyer is getting appraisal slip and go from there. So let's go take a little road trip. And also I love that this original box comes with two. I'm not sure if back in the day when you bought one, you got two, so you were double strapped or if this was like a fun leisurely activity for back in the day. This is like, get a quarrel kit. Got a quarrel with someone? Here's your kit. Challenge them to a duel. All right, let's go make some moves on this very cold day. A few moments later. If you guys have not seen the show Beef on Netflix, it's really good. It's about like a road rage incident that just spirals out of control. I'm just thinking like, okay, I don't get road rage per se, but well, now when I was an Uber driver, I get pretty fucking mad at people, but I'm just thinking like, what if I just like, lose my temper and I just, I have like an antique pistol. I'm like waving at people in the hut. Yep. So I use my employee's car because I still don't have a, I still ride my bike. And like, I just, I feel so ridiculous being so big driving this tiny car. Anyway, not procrastinating. Off we go. I will say this car has some zip to it. God, if I get into an accident, I am fucking dead. D E D D E E I D D. Why else does Oh, I forgot the X. D E E I I I D D X D. Profit alone. Dead. Come on. Who fucking taught you to drive, Helen Keller? All right, coming up on the first stop here, we're in Excelsior, Minnesota, which is like a honestly like a bougie rich town right by Lake Minnetonka. Uh, there's another dealer I'm stopping in to quickly see. I gotta pick up some gold from him. I'm not gonna bring my camera in, he's pretty private. Um, but I know he's watching, so hi. Also, I hope I don't spend too much money because I have a nasty habit of coming here and he's got cool shit in his showcase and then I buy it for, yeah, yeah. I, uh, last time I came here, I only I was supposed to come out here for three 10 ounce bars and I spent $14,000. Let's see. Later. Hour later, I spent almost $5,000. I was just here to get a quarter ounce of gold. That was supposed to be five, uh, 550, and I ended up getting a whole lot. So let me show you guys what I got really quick. So my expensive box, I got some bullion pieces, some MS-69 Eagles. I got this James Bond Diamonds Are Forever. Where the fuck was this last week? I fucking should have bought this last week. Some boomer shit. Lunar New Year, another box in the deers. So, okay, here's the bullion pieces, but then he had a whole fuck ton of these. 
I bought like boxes of these, 100 bucks. So I'll probably get probably 300 out, so. Yeah, it's like kind of annoying to be spending money like that because like money's tight, but everything I bought from him, I spent maybe 45, $5,000. I'll probably make about 13, $1,400, so. All right, on to the next stop. I might stop get some food too, I'm hungry. Eat some garbage. Oh, go ahead and put some Taco Bell in that gut. Oh, and then whatever that comes out the back end, that's the punishment. Whoa. Taco Bell, fuck you. Fuck every little bit about you, you slob. Think outside the bun. Whoa, peaches. Oh, shit, man. Yes, I'm very aware how gross Taco Bell meat is, and it's like borderline not even meat. I don't care. I don't care. All right, well. Oh, God, all right. I got moves to make. Time to go. Onward! God, this is like way the fuck out. I drove almost an hour out of the city for this gun. This fucker better fire, though I can say. This is like eating on my entire, I did not realize how far I was driving. All right, here it is. God, I hope I'm at the right spot too, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have another public freak out if I drove all this way and either they're closed or I'm in the wrong spot. Yeah, it's all good. He's a, he's a really nice guy too. He initially looked at it, he was very impressed with the quality. Um, he said he called it, it was, she's a beaut. You know, he's like, you know, I might have to do repairs. Like, make it tip top, do anything you want. I just want to know if it fires. One week later. I just got a phone call from the gunsmith. So we're gonna go all the fucking way out. I'll tell you guys in a little bit when I get, I know what the gun is worth. It's, this is worth my time, but like, Jesus fucking Christ, a lot of fucking driving for one item. All right, back at the store, it's later on. The moment of truth has finally arrived. I got the appraisal slip. So he called me last week and he said, I, I thought this was gonna take like three weeks. And you know, he called me after just a few days. He goes, well, I got some bad news. I'm like, oh well, fuck, it's fake. No, it's not fake. This part, this part, and this part, it's got a double, it has a double stamp on it. That was the bad news, was somebody replicated the stamp. Low end. You guys, that gun is worth four grand. High end, 6,500. I paid 850. Home run item. Uh, I've got it now. I just made a TikTok. I fucking guarantee you the TikTok is gonna get taken down for some bullshit because it's a weapon. So I'm asking 5,500 for the gun, another 600 for the sword, or the pair for 5,900. Yeah, that was a home run item. First antique firearm I purchased was a great purchase. Also, that's why I don't do a whole lot with items like that because that did eat up. Like I didn't steal it from the guy. I paid a decent amount of money and I bought that over two months ago. So it has taken me months to get it authenticated, get it clean, find somebody who can do it. Uh, four hours of driving, but you know, I'm making probably a couple thousand dollars once I sell it. So part of the business. Quick update. Uh, the sword is sold. The gun is still available. The appraiser said don't take less than four. I guess giving it away. Um, I made a TikTok. I had a lot of interest, but I, I'm just getting low ball offers. I'm not going to take them. If you're like, oh, I haven't, you only paid 850. Yes, but I, I need to get paid fairly on something. I'm not going to just sell something quick just to make a quick buck. I do that with some stuff, but not a home run item like this. I want, and if I take my time, I can get full worth. I put the fucking time into driving. I'm not taking less than four on the gun. I'd, I'd like, ideally, I'd like five. I don't think I'm going to get five, but I'd take 45 but not, yeah, don't jerk me off on it. But guns available, sort of made some money. Uh, in any event, this this is going to be a very profitable deal. I mean, I could dump this gun right now easily for 35, but I, you know, got three full when I paid. I just want to try and get four or five full. All right, we got ourselves a new package from Lady Liberty Bullion. Let's open her up and take a look and shine. Oh, bitches. Lady Liberty. Cool. Tommy gun. Oh wow, look at that, that's so awesome. New pawn man versus con man rounds. This is a new wash he's done. I'm not signing these anymore. That's the signed ones are all done. I'm gonna just mass produce these now. Got another pawn cat round. Got a desert eagle. And then I got two more of my HH uh, Holmes bars. Number five and number six. I'm gonna try and have them focus more on these so we can get through this and get onto the next criminal because I don't want this, like, I wanna release one of these a quarter, not one of these a year. So we're doing, like I said, 34. I'm keeping the last one, the first one. So these two, I mean, by the time you guys are seeing this, I bet, I bet I've sold these. These are going on my website. All right, so we just had a little bit of a, not a kerfuffle, some confusion here. I bought these from my smelter yesterday because yeah, I occasionally buy bullion from him. People sell him stuff. And I noticed it says one ounce, but it says copy. And generally that's a really bad sign when it says copy. That generally means it's fake. But I sigma it, I weighed it, it weighs right, it sounds right, it's sigmas, and I put acid on it. I got to the bottom of it. And some mints will stamp copy when it's a copy of an old coin. So this is a copy of a buffalo nickel. So that's why they did that. If any of you guys bought this, uh, 
It's silver, it's real, it's, it says copy. I honestly, if I would look closer, I probably wouldn't have bought it because I just don't like that, but nothing wrong with it. Let me take a look. Yeah, so there's uh, it's just, uh, I just got divorced, so I want to do it here. Oh dear, uh-oh. Uh Hopefully he paid for it. But here's the thing. So this one over here, yeah. it got stuck in my in uh -huh. my fingers, so I had to cut it. Oh, I, I'm not buying it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably melt it down. Okay. Rip it out, so. Uh, what's in there? Okay. These are just um, extra stuff I had, like I had these one. Oh, sure. This is 14, looks like. Uh, I think it is, uh, I'm not sure actually. I think it's 10. Oh, it's 10, you're right, yeah. yeah. This is 18? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's find out. Uh, okay, this is 14. Like I said, hopefully you you didn't pay for most of this stuff, or at least mm -hmm. not this, because these are diamond rings, like the biggest scam. Yeah, I, no, I didn't pay for anything. <laughs> so. Okay, so this pile here, mm -hmm. this 14 karat pile, uh, 150. This item here, just this 110 karat, is gonna be 25. This ring is 130, and then this one is also 130. What happened with the diamond over here? Uh, the gold value is only 40 bucks. So I'm actually adding 50, she said add 40. And I bet that ring cost $2,000 on ours now. <laughs> yeah. So it's $430. Can you do any more for this one? Uh, tell you what, I'll make it 450 for everything. That's really as high as I wanna, as I wanna go on it. Can you do 500 for everything? I think that's about what I'm gonna get out of it. I'll do 475. Trust me for another 50 bucks. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, I just need an ID. 325. Thank you. That's your ID. I am not gonna make very much money on that deal. I'll make some money, and gold is rising, so sure. Okay. So the 18 karat ring melts at exactly 154.75. The 10 karat melts at 29.40. Three. Uh, this pile here of 14, 192.37. I will make about $47 off of that deal. She had a marquee cut. The marquee cuts, you guys are terrible. They're very outdated. They're hard to sell. Nobody likes them. It wasn't that good of a stone. And she probably in her head just thought, you know, we see this all the time here. She thought it was worth more than it actually was. So I don't think I'm gonna keep any of this stuff. I'm gonna melt it all down, take my 47 bucks in and out. Once again, before we get into the monologue, I sincerely want to thank the episode sponsor, Local Coin Company. Visit Local Coin Company on social media, also Bullion Daddy. Check them out on Whatnot. Visit their storefront. They're a great supporter, friend, and sponsor of mine and just of this brand here, Pond Man. So please check them out. There is a link in the video description below. And with that, let's go to a galaxy far, far away. All right, you guys, since it is May the 4th, may the 4th be with you, we are talking all about the Star Wars franchise, particularly the collectible aspect of the series. Each sold separately, you put them together, new from Micro Machines. As I first introduced way back in the Pokemon episode, the top franchises of all time, Star Wars falls on the top five of all time, a pop culture, period. Star Wars was introduced to the world in 1977, and you would be very hard pressed to find somebody who has never seen it. If somebody said, I've never seen Star Wars, I'd say, well, that's funny. You don't look like your eyes don't work. Did your parents lock you in a closet like Harry Potter? I don't think I've ever met anybody who's never seen it. It is such a staple of our culture. Now, I, myself, you guys, am not that big of a Star Wars fan. I think it's cool. Honestly, I don't like the new movies at all. In fact, I gave up. I was Uber driving, I was having a terrible day, and I just was like, fuck it, I'm gonna just go see the Star Wars movie. And he fights a fucking hologram is the climax. And I was like, what kind of bullshit is this? I, I gave up. Uber driving, I was miserable. I gave up making money to go see this piece of shit and lose money, and then I went back out to my car, and I had a uh, punctured a tire at some point in the day, so I had a flat tire, and it was just like, God, the movie sucked, the day sucked, everything sucked that day. Star Wars has expanded from an original trilogy to an entire line of collectibles, toys, merchandise, TV shows, movies, you name it. And with the sale to Disney in 2012 for $4.05 billion, the legs on Star Wars have really crawled. It has evolved into something way bigger than it was before Disney took it over. Now, again, I like The Mandalorian, that's it. The only thing I liked about the fucking movie, Rogue One. The only thing I liked about Rogue One is everyone died at the end. I was like, good. Star Wars has an estimated value, the franchise, of 50 to 60 billion dollars. So Disney got quite a buy for their buck. Now, you could say that they have grown it into that because it was not that when they bought it. But yeah, I mean, it was a really good buy for Disney. Now, although this was a hugely successful deal involving Star Wars, there have been a lot of blunders involving deals with Star Wars too. Particularly... The licensing. This is fascinating if you don't know the story. You guys wanna know why George Lucas is a multi-billionaire? It's not per se because of the success of the film franchise. It's because they gave him the rights to the toys because they didn't see any value in it. In fact, 20th Century Fox 
didn't think Star Wars was gonna be that big of a deal. It was kind of a surprise success, much like Pokemon. It started off with the negotiation of the production for the first film in 1977. George Lucas was offered half a million dollars, which for 1977 was insane. That was a lot of money back then. He had just come off the success of American Graffiti, but he thought, you know what? I don't wanna just get paid on this thing. I want the rights too. So he went back and he said, give me 150, but I want the merchandising rights and I want the rights to the sequels. And they said, all right, Ooh, that was a mistake. So Lucas made Star Wars A New Hope and he got 100% of the merchandising rights. He then turned around and he sold the rights to Kenner Toys, which was then like the biggest toy company there was. And this was after a lot of toy companies shot him down and were like, nah, the Star Wars, nah, pff, whatever. So with the new rights, Lucas was getting a nickel per dollar, but then Kenner was sold to Hasbro. So when Hasbro took over, they forgot to pay Lucas. It was like a $10,000 annual fee. And by not paying him, by just, oops, they voided the contract by doing this. So Lucas goes and he shops again, cause he's a free agent basically. Well, he goes back to Hasbro after making a big circle and they agree to pay him 18%, which was almost four times the amount in the last contract. So because of this blunder, because of Lucas retaining the rights to the sequels and the merchandising and the toys, Lucas got filthy, filthy, filthy rich. One of the greatest success stories in Hollywood or one of the greatest success stories in collectibles, period. What a brilliant move. But speaking of collectibles, that is what we're really gonna focus on here because being one of the biggest franchises out there, it has, like I said, some of the most expensive collectibles attached to it. As we know, collectors, avid collectors, are willing to hand out insane amounts of money for things that other people that aren't interested in would look and be like, wait, you paid that much for what? And collectors, if they're wealthy enough, really will pay anything to get what they want. That's what a collector who's passionate about something does. They don't buy it because they're trying to make money. They buy it because they want to have it in their collection. Now these collectibles range from toys to screen props to special limited giveaway items. There's not a field that Star Wars doesn't touch. Now some of the highest ends of these collectibles are the original pieces from the movie. Screen used props or costumes. Because come on, if you're an avid Star Wars fan, don't you want to show off your collection and don't you want people who see your collection to say, wow, that is an original piece from the movie as a collector. This really, these film props and, the, and these original items from the film, this is as close as you can get to the actual first property of it. So one of the most expensive items, really quick, it's actually not a costume. It's the original Panavision camera that George Lucas used for episode four. That went for $625,000 last time it was sold. Another film prop holy grail for Star Wars collectibles are the spaceships that they used in the original trilogy, the prop ships. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the making of Star Wars. You know, they weren't using computers, they were using miniatures. They usually go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Rebel Black Cade Runner, I saw a price take 450,000. But the costumes are even more expensive. The original Darth Vader helmet went for 1.1 million. And being as quintessential to our pop culture, to everything that, that helmet means for the franchise, that actually, that number seems cheap to me. I would have thought it would be more. The most expensive prop I could find, it was an R2-D2 prop, and that sold for 2.76 million. Some cheaper ones, Han Solo's blaster, that went for 200K. Han Solo's leather jacket also went for 200K. But unsurprisingly, the most iconic costume is Princess Leia's slave costume. And this really has become a sex symbol that is I mean, it's still a sex symbol 50, 60 years later. Last time that sold 96,000, I would think it would bring a lot more today. Now it's interesting about that, that slave costume, as we talked about with Lego, is why Lego pulled Jabba the Hutt's palace because it was glorifying sex slave women, even though it was just literally depicting a scene from a movie. Neither here nor there, I would actually think that Lego's scandal involving it and just where culture has gone with, with this topic, I would think that would actually drive up the price even more because it makes it even more controversial. But the other field, when you think Star Wars collectibles, the biggest field I would say, or at least the one that people know the most, the one that probably has the most collectors are the Star Wars toys. Now, last May the 4th, we briefly talked about this. In fact, last year I told you guys I was gonna be doing this episode. The most expensive Star Wars toy I could find was the rocket firing Boba Fett prototype. The Samples go for hundreds of thousands, and a hundred thousand is the realistically accepted price tag. But again, you get rich people in this collector market vacuum where money doesn't mean anything and collectibles are getting so expensive, and it's just two two rich guys in a pissing contest and they both want it. Well then it goes for whoever's whoever decides to give up first. And when money doesn't mean anything to these people, what that does is if it sells for that, well it's like art. It sets a new precedent for what it's worth. Will the next person pay that much? I don't know, but it always comes up at auction when one of these items comes up. What did the last one sell for? And if the last one sold for a million, when two years earlier one sold for 100,000, even if it was this scenario, the collector market looks at it as if it is exponentially increasing in price. People will base the guess or the estimate of what they think is gonna go for 
based on whatever it sold for last. So a wild card like that can massively drive up the price and keep it that way. Now, the most expensive Star Wars toy, like actually, and I don't know if I'd call this a toy because it, it's like not original. It's not from the 70s and the 80s. It's not from way back in the day. It's a newer piece. It is the C-3PO solid gold Star Wars figure made by Lego, $300,000. Only five of those 14 karat gold C-3PO's were made. I would call that a very safe investment. If they only made five of them and the market's going this crazy over them, and like Star Wars isn't going anywhere. There's literally nothing I could think of that could sink it. There's no way it could get me toed or canceled or anything else, really. Like, like I, I seriously can't think of anything that would bring this franchise down. It is a money-making cash cow. It is a staple of our culture and it's not going anywhere. It is only getting bigger and, well, better is not the right word according to me, except for the Mandalorian because that show's great. Pedro Pascal is, oh, oh. Not even my type, and I let him fuck me. And you guys, we are just skimming the surface here for the sake of the episode. It's May the 4th. I wanted to touch on this because I haven't really talked about this topic, and it's such a staple of collectibles. My question to you guys, are any of you guys Star Wars collectors? What's your favorite movie? Who's your favorite character in the show? What's your favorite collectible? And if you do have a collection, tell me in the comment section, what is your most expensive item? What is an item that has gone way up in value since you've acquired it? I'll tell you guys, for speculation, I think the Lego Star Wars is a no-brainer. Because as we talked about with Lego, it's like a stock market. They generally all go up in value and you marry these two, Star Wars and Lego, seems like shooting fish in a barrel to me. I'll tell you guys, I don't have the money for it right now, but I am planning soon on buying the Jabba the Hutt Palace, the one that was canceled. Not opening it, just keeping it for 10, 15 years and then reselling it down the road to make money. I'll just kind of quickly tell you guys my favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, it's gotta be Empire Strikes Back. Well, I don't know, Return of the Jedi is good too. I love the first three. I like the second trilogy because my dad would pull me out of school to go see them. In fact, going to see the second, I like the second one because my memory of seeing it is like, it was a great memory with my dad. He picked me up from school and it was Rolls Royce and like all the kids were like looking at them like, whoa, there's a Rolls Royce out there. Who's is that? So my dad said, this is my thing that my dad would do and he'd pull me out of school. He'd, he'd take me out of school sometimes to like fuck around and have fun. We have a family affair is what he'd say. And that was just the excuse was family affair. So he took me out of school. We saw Star Wars episode two on like a school day and it was, just a great day and I, I like that movie a lot for that memory and honestly I don't think it's a terrible movie. But with that you guys that is the Star Wars franchise and again I do think if you are looking to get into a collectible where you're not going to lose your ass in terms of buying something like Beanie Babies this is a safe one. And that's the magic of the Star Wars film franchise and collectibles. I like galaxies far far away. No one can hear the people scream. All right, you guys, well, just like that, it is the end of the day and the end of the episode. I sincerely want to thank the episode sponsor again, local coin company slash bullion daddy. Check them out on Whatnot. Visit their storefront. Visit them on social media. There's a link in the video description. And if you guys like this video, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification button so you guys know when new episodes of Pawn Man are coming out. Please become a Pawn Man Patreon or sponsor if you like what I do here. Check out my books on Amazon. Follow me on social media at Evan Kale and at Pawn Man. And I'll see you guys back here for another great episode of Pawn Man. Later, guys.